Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, we now welcome the number five ranked UFC Bantamweight contender in the world, Rafael Asanso. Rafael, thank you for the time, sir. Stand up. Uh, sit up. And look here. Yeah. How you doing? Yeah. How are you? We will take the first question from Caroline Pierce with BT Sport. Hi, Rafael. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. Look, coming off a couple of losses yourself, same for Cody. This is a kind of a, a really important fight for many reasons to get back on track and also to shape the landscape of the bantamweight division. Are you feeling any extra pressure or, or even motivation going into this one? Yeah, a little, little bit of both. You know, um, it's okay. It's all part of the job, and and uh, I, I have always felt that way. So it, I don't really feel any different any other fights to be honest with you i'm sure you know you know despite the losses what cody can do he's got that power he's got that footwork etc but he, he can also be quite an emotional fighter as we've seen you don't seem and you're not the type of fighter that that really plays into that or you know brings about any trash talk or anything okay. like that. but but is it something you can utilize in any way and are you expecting any emotion from him yeah um, um I'm, I'm expecting the, the best guy um, that, that's all I have in mind right now. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not really um, expecting um, um, specific pointers or, or whatever you know you know, bring to the table. I'm expecting the best guy, best guy possible on, on Saturday night. And um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't really change, change too much. Whatever it brings to the table, uh, I'll be ready. Um, as you mentioned, and a lot of them, everybody's mentioned, he's really emotional or whatever. I don't really care. Um, whatever, whatever emotions he brings, whatever uh, physicality he brings, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be right there. I mean, it doesn't really change much for me. And you're probably aware that he's been over the East Coast training with Mark Henry as well as Ricardo Almeida, and you know the the guys that could really help with with the ground game, the grappling, that side of things. Uh huh. Is that that is that playing into potentially the game plan for you? Um, expecting either that it could take place more on the ground, or that you might take it there yourself. Yeah, I'm gonna be. Well, uh, it's not, but to, to answer the the detail there, but um, it, I, I'm training. I already I train in every area, so um, you know I'm not going with just a plan A. I'm going into this fight. Uh, very well trained in all areas, so uh, I don't really care where he's training, where, what it is, gonna, what his changes were, what his changes are. Um, doesn't really make a difference for me. I know the goal for you is still to be the bantamweight champion, and with Henry Cejudo vacating the title, and you know we obviously have that vacant title up for grabs now with um, Petra Young and Jose Aldo. How far off do you think? you are from that opportunity yourself. Obviously, this is the co-main event. Um, there's there's other, obviously, strong bantamweights on the card as well. What do you feel you've got to do to, to make sure you're you're there or thereabouts when it comes to who faces the winner of that vacant title bout? Yeah, you know, i got to have a, a good performance like, like every fight. You know, it's not, not just because if this is a co-main event against Cody Garber. Um, but um, every fight, i got to you know, make sure that um, I, I'm about to the best. Rafael Sansa all that night, and uh, that's what I'm going to try to do. And, uh, you know, um, no, no extra pressure though, as there is, as there is uh, all the bantam weights there with the faking title. Uh, once it comes fight time, yeah, I shut everything off, and it's just, uh, it's just uh, game time. You know, uh, doing everything I can to win. And last question from me. I know you've seen a lot in your long career, but but this time, obviously, it's going to be an empty arena, and the fight week, Las Vegas itself, has a very different feel about it. Does is that a good thing for you? You know, taking away potentially any pressure, or are you going to miss the yeah. crowd and miss the bigger cage? Yeah, it's not a good good the, the good thing for me, or it's a bad thing for me. It's this what it is now. I mean, times is crazy right now. Uh, I, I miss you know everything that's going on. It's okay. Uh, I fought. I fought. Uh, my first professional event was a very small crowd. It was a private event. It was my first professional event. Uh, I was very proud of seventy-five people, hundred people. Uh, I have. I still have a lot of remembrance of that uh, event. Um, so it, it's it, like I said. It's, it's not good. It's not bad. It's, it's, it is what it is right now. Um, 
and I'm gonna try to uh, cancel all that, you know, if it affects this crowd or not, and now uh, I need to do me on, on Saturday night. So back to how it was in the beginning. Well, best of luck with that, Hafea. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. And we will take our next question from Jim Barcelone with Miami Herald. Miami Herald. Hey, thank you so much. Yes, in South Florida, I was going to ask you, how are you, your family, friends, where you are now, and also in Brazil? How is everyone doing during all the pandemic and everything? Yeah, and as I mentioned, it's crazy times right now. Um, I, I cannot uh, miss the opportunity to, to speak just because it's in everyone's, uh, it's, it's, it's correct now. And it's a it's crazy time right now. The family is good. My mom lives here in Recife, um, early there, which it's uh, it's been hit pretty hard in Recife right now. So she's being very cautious. She's taking all, all her measures, obviously, of social distancing and um, and, and, and you know um, amidst the, the 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 pandemic there in Brazil in Recife. Uh, and 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 back home where I live in Atlanta, we we do the same thing. We take precautions. We we uh, we're doing everything we can. Uh, even you know reopening reopening the gym uh, up there at Ascension, um, as well. My my gym at ATT uh, it is also reopening. We're taking all the measurements uh, to make sure everyone's safe, and and we're gonna get through this. You are a very focused fighter. You've been fighting. You have many fights. You're very experienced. And it's interesting because this card has many, many bantamweights on the card. Right. This is, you think this is a good time to not only, you're showcasing yourself, obviously, but showcasing the bantamweight division. Yeah, it's great, great card. Great bantamweight card. And, and yeah, it's, 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 it's always, for me, you know, I try to, to um, neutralize all the, all the factors, right? So, it's, it's, the extras uh, comes along, and, 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 and what, what I try to do is, is the way the type of guy I am, I try to neutralize everything, and, and, and it's me there, right? So, so I, I don't extra pressure on me, or I have to do this or that, you know, because, you know, I, you know I'm going to do my best out there, um, and, 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 and uh, I'm going to come victorious, you know, at the end of the night, that's all I have in mind right now. Being mentally focused, it's interesting because, am I right, in your last fight was in August, so almost a year, is that correct? So in doing that, just having so many fights under your belt, does that help you as far as mentally preparing for something like that because you haven't fought in so long? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've, had, I've had taken um, the times off of injuries, unfortunate injuries. And, and, and different factors. Um, so it's almost a year now. Yeah, right up to like ten months. It's okay. You know, I'm still I'll still bring the 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 the, uh, the experience from from the previous, even though it was a negative. Uh, I'll still bring that um, that uh, the experience along and try to really improve upon that that that, that loss. You know, um, I think I did I did make make some changes as well, uh, and and that helped me. Um, that that you know that that loss also um, uh, gave me a new a new, a new path to, to take in, in training and stuff and so yeah it's it's it's, it's okay the time off was okay you know to improve and and, and keep improving uh, being being, uh, being being a student of of the arts game uh, so it's it's okay ten months it's okay and then lastly for me. How much of a fighter, mentally and physically, are you different from when you were first starting to where you are now? Or are you different from when you first started to where you are now? From when I first started? You know, um, I'm 37 years old, and, and, and I feel no different. You know, everything is just, just so, so, so the same, so, so equal for me. You know, the weight cut is the same, the, my, 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 my cardio. Uh, it, uh, my routines, my workout, everything just feels the same, you know, even even better now. Um, I'm, I'm wiser, um, you know, as, as a, you know, as a human being, just as a wiser guy. Uh, it just it feels so natural, you know, you know, right now. 
you know, but then let's say that with, with the pandemic, you know, it wasn't, you know, as easy as it could have for everyone, right? To, you know, the, the, we to take days off, the, the gyms were still reopening, uh, training partners were, were being cautious, so we had to reunite and, and, um, and, and get, get the team together. Uh, I was very fortunate myself that I had, I had a, a good team in the way I was doing. Uh, and we kept our training pretty good, um, you know. But, but yeah, so some of the trainers were, well, I could not see some of some of them um, still, but uh, we're still okay. Thank you. All the best on Saturday. Thanks, bud. And we will take our next question from Gabriel Pangalangan with the Dojo Drifter. Rafael, hello from the Philippines. So tell us more about your training camp. Some people have said that, you know, the pandemic actually didn't change it that much. Some people, of course, felt uh, a big impact from the pandemic. How was it for you? Yeah, we, we felt we felt the, the impact for sure. Um, you know, it's, 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 I'm going to say it again. It's different times. It's, it's different times, crazy times for, for everyone. Um, and we did feel the, the impact, you know. Within the community, the family, um, in the uh, martial arts community, in the martial arts world, in our gyms world, um, um, our gym Ascension, you know, even ATT was shut down. Um, yeah, we, we, we felt we felt uh, a little bit of impact, and we try to ma maintain to the best of our ability. Right? Well, it worked out, worked out fine, worked out, worked out okay. You know, it, uh, things started to come back right, right in timely manner. But it worked out okay. All right, and then looking at uh, your opponent, Cody's uh, looking at his game. Where do you think you have the most advantage in this fight? Yeah, I mean the, the advantage. I'm a more experienced, more seasoned guy. Um, you know, I, I think I have the advantage um, anywhere, despite despite him having you know some heavy hands or whatever. Um, you know, my my mentality is I have the advantage every second of the fight. Okay, and then also the the targeted title fight between Peter Yan and Jose Aldo. It actually hasn't been officially announced. Do you think mm -hmm. that an, an impressive win here for you could catapult you into that title shot instead of yeah, sure, Aldo? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I think a win in general will, will, uh, will, will put me right right there in contention. Um, I've been around a long time. Uh, you know, you can. Criticize, you know, because there's this critics out, out there, and you know they can say whatever they want. I've been around a long time. I've been doing my job correctly for a long time, um, despite some negative results. And um, I'm looking to get to the top contention, you know, after this one. Yes, and you've been at the, you've been top ranked for a long time. You're, like you said, you're 37 years old, but you've never had a title shot. Do you think never that this is shot. finally your time? Never had a title shot. Well, we we had uh, we had two opportunities and we uh, we got injured. I uh, could not sign the ball agreement on two different occasions, uh, which which was my uh, two of my worst injuries. Uh, so bad bad timing for me as well. Okay, so but you believe that this is the opportunity that you will get that title shot soon? Yes, sir. All right. Best of luck with that, sir. Thank you very much. And we will take our next question from Yago Hedua with Revista Tatami. Tatami. Yago, you're unmuted. Please go ahead. Bem, aqui é o Iago da Tatami. Obrigado, Iago. Obrigado. 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 Como é que você acha que isso impacta na sua luta? Também o Code também vem de uma sequência negativa, né? Você acha que os dois é... 
Okay, I think we're having some connection issues with Iago. We're going to circle around with him. We'll take our next and last question with Mark Raimondi from ESPN. Mark, you're unmuted. Please go ahead. Hey, Javier, how are you? Good, man. How are you? Good. Um, real quick, you know, you you fought uh, both Aljamain Sterling and Corey Sanhagen, and, and they're in a big uh, bantamweight fight. Obviously, your division, something that, that means something to you as well for, the, you know, this fight. How do you see that, that one going? Do you, do you have a prediction for that one? That's a good fight. I mean, but, but both, both but as of right now, dude, they're, they're, you can tell, you can say they're both experienced guys in the division now. Um, yeah, I see, I see a pretty good fight. I don't have a prediction, but I see a pretty good fight. You know, uh, both of, of them are on the uh, on the taller scale of the metalweight division. Good fight. Good topic. I'll be sneak peeking from, from backstage for sure. They both have kind of different styles compared to, to one another. Do you see any any one of those styles having an edge over the other in this fight? Yeah, um, I, I don't see an edge right off the bat like that. And it's just uh, it's di different, right? Uh, Aljamain kicks a little bit more, and, and uh, Saint Hag is longer. You know, he utilizes the his hands a little bit longer. Uh, yeah, I see, I see a pretty pretty nice stylistic, you know matchup there. Good fight. Good fight. Thanks, Rafael. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Thank you, Rafael. That is all the time we had for you, sir. You are good to go.